So today we're going to look at Kirchhoff's uh, laws, which are useful uh, rules to remember when we're trying to solve problems involving uh, circuits. Um, and it's always something else having a pronunciation that I keep forgetting how to do it. Kirchhoff, I kept it. I think for ages I thought it was Kirchhoff, which was incorrect. So let's go back to our circuit. Build it. Let's build something. Right, okay. Let's build a wire and let's build a switch. We'll switch in and make it nice and simple. And, and here. Right, okay. Switch is on. We've got stuff going around. Now, um, as we've seen, we've got our charge flow, and we can measure the charge flow because we can't see electrons. We measure it using ammeters. So let's bring that ammeter, bring that out, and show this. Excellent. We've got 0 0.9 amps. What is the ammeter reading on the other side? Hopefully, you remember that it should be, oh, look, 0 0.9 amps. Uh, current is the same at all points on a series circuit. If we have another loop, and let's say we add a bulb here and a bulb here, and let's look at ammeter between them. Uh, what we can also find though is that if we build stuff in parallel, we got there, uh, we have a different thing. So when we're in in circuits, uh, you know, current in a single loop is going to be the same, but current on different loops doesn't have to be. Now, the question that arises is, well, what's the current going through the battery? You know, given the information in here, can you say it? Well, you probably might be able to, uh, but we'll check by throwing an ammeter in. Oh, there's so many ammeters. Right, let's go. We've got 1.35 amps. So here, Coming out of the battery, we've got 1.35, and on this second middle loop, we've got 0 0.9, on this bottom, we've got 0 0.45, which should make sense because this that we've got coming through the battery is this plus this. Now, there's a fundamental law at the heart of this. It's called the conservation of charge. Okay, charges as they move around the circuit do not disappear; they don't vanish off into into the ether. Um, everything that comes out of the battery must be accounted for at the other end by the time it goes back in, even though, as we saw with drift velocity, it might take a long time for an electron to do this journey, um, but they must do it. Now, what we have, so what we have is, this is Kirchhoff's, essentially Kirchhoff's first law, is that the current that's flowing into a junction, so this is a junction, must be the same as the current flowing out of a junction. And if you have multiple paths out of a junction, then it, you just sort of becomes an algebraic sum. So we have this is our current in, it must equal this current plus this current. If we add another, if we add another um, uh, loop, so let's add a zoom out a little bit. Excellent. Let's add another loop. And let's add another uh, bulb. Oh no, and let's let's just make this a random resistance. Let's make this something with 30 amps, whatever. And let's see what we get. Okay, so can we work out, given the information that we've got, can we work out what the current must be going down this first bottom loop? Well, we can because we know we've got a total of 1.65, um, and that is being split 0 0.9 that way. 0.45 that way, so whatever is remaining must be going down that final thing. So we had uh, 1.35, so it must be 0 0.3 is my best guess. So let's uh, check that by throwing an ammeter in. And this is where things become rather. There we go! Hooray! Physics worked, or at least this simulation worked. Now, when you're using stuff in the lab, you might sometimes find that you know you get an ammeter that isn't the same either side of a bulb. You know, often in key stage three, you'll see some students will say, oh, the current's used up. And that's because on one side it might be 0 0.9, on the other it's 0 0.38 or something. That's because of zero errors or sensitivity differences between your ammeters. It's not because something's going missing. It's because not all measuring devices are identical. In a simulation, it's you know, fairly straightforward how it works. Um, but we can see like how things are being divided up, you know, and, and we can see on an individual branch, you know, the speed. So 
the more loops we add in parallel, we're going to we're able to actually draw more current out of the battery because we always add another route for things to go. Um, you know, even if we add a we add another one, let's uh, let's, let's go out. Let's, you know, let's have a uh, let's have a resistor. Uh, let's make it a low resistance part. Let's make it a uh, you know a, let's make this lower as you know, five ohms. Have that and have that going to there. And look now we've got three point four five current. The more stuff we add, the more current we draw out of the battery because it just allows more stuff, more um, uh, you know, it just allows another path for electrons to throw. Every single loop that we add um, is made things very unhappy. So this is uh, you know this is kind of what we get and we can see charges moving a lot faster up here and then moving at different speeds and I think I've made the whole thing very unhappy. So might be because that's not a bulb. Let's put it in as a bulb and see what happens. Oh uh, yes, that's that's why. That was why I was making it unhappy. So let's lower the resistance of this bulb down. So why? So this allows us to solve problems. You know, so current going in must be equal to the current that's going out. And we can actually see as these things here, we have very fast current here. But as we sort of like go up this one here, we've got our lowest current loop goes through this bulb. So this, this bit is then faster. And then these two things coming in, the top one is the fast bits as well. So this is Kirchhoff's first law. So and it's all about conservation of charge. So let's go back to it. So. Um, or Kirchhoff's, sorry. That's your state. That um, the sum of the current uh, going into a junction. Must equal the sum of the current going out. Okay, this is because of the law. Of the conservation charge. Okay, so it doesn't matter what charges are moving, they can't vanish. If the charge is an intrinsic property of particles, they don't disappear. Okay, so if we uh, sort of draw this as a kind of a circuit, okay, we will have, um, let's say, a bulb here. An anode to here. Uh, oops, so let's make this dry on the top. So if we have uh, here is I one going this way. We've got here, we've got I2, we've got I3, and let's call this one I4. So here's our direction of current flow. What this tells us is that um, by definition, I1, diameter that's here, must equal um, I4. So we must have you know current coming in. And also it tells us that um, I1 is equal to, there's I1, I2, and then going down this way is I3. Okay. Now, um, sometimes they don't draw it with full circuits. Sometimes they might draw it by different sort of loops, uh, sort of lines going in. So they might just draw the wires coming in. So we might have uh, a sort of example of you know, draw these in different colours. Let's say we've got a wire going that way, and we've got a wire going up in this direction. So it kind of looks a bit like a collision, even though it's not. Oh no, not no, not the same thickness. That's upsetting. 
I'll change that now. So we can say this is uh, I1, I2, I3, and I4. So we can say, you know, in this one, um, the current's going into the junction, which is there. That's I1 um, plus I2 will equal um, I3 plus I4. And if you get problems with this, do make sure you check the arrows because sometimes they are nasty and you have an arrow going that way in these sort of things. And we can do a kind of, you know, do a little weird example. Uh, let's say we've got, um, we're going into this junction and let's say this is 3.1 amps. Uh, so we're trying to go into this junction of um, 1.7 amps. Uh, and let's say we've got current going out that way and that's, um, 1.4 amps and then we have a well, screen one and we say oh, okay what must this be well it must be going out because 1.4 is smaller than these two you know so uh you know i uh, what is i so uh, i is going to equal in this case 3.1 plus 1.7 which is what's going in minus 1.4 so we're going to get current of equal to 3.4 amps not designed to be incredibly difficult uh, but it's just a useful shortcut for solving things so either it's about just working out these sort of and track, um, addition and subtraction but it is also occasionally saying what is the law that underpins it the conservation of charge and that is Kirchhoff's first law um, mathematically so uh, there's a few other ways of saying it um, you know some people say the sum of all currents going in and now it's by saying if they're coming out then negative and if they're going in they're positive is equal to zero but this is how you'll see it anyway let's go back and take the uh, second look ah this has been running the whole time so let's go right let's not use amity this time let's use voltmeters okay so last time we talked about uh, EMF and potential difference, and we said that the EMF is the work done on each unit of charge by the power supply of the battery. Well, that's that too. That's very exciting. And then we have um, potential difference, which is the work done uh, per unit of charge as they go through components. So let's have a bulb. Let's have two bulbs. Uh, and let's build our circuit. So there we go. So we have that. Uh, let's put that in here. Right, okay, and let's go switch, switch. Uh, great, so I turn that on. So, um, oh, interestingly, actually, I'll do this first. Um, with the switch open, just be aware, you still you still do um, measure a uh, an EMF across the terminal end of the battery. It's called the terminal EMF. We'll come across that. You still do measure it. Like you can stick a voltmeter across. Um, thing. And weird thing is, that's because you have made a circuit, you have actually made a weird little circuit. Right? Whereas if you measure it across, um, say, I suppose a bulb, the circuit's not on, there is no potential difference. Um, charges aren't doing any work, so there's no difference. But we can connect things up and there we go. So um, I think we're only allowed two voltmeters. So let's first off think okay, what is our EMF? Well, it's 18 volts. Okay, we've got a anyway, so 18 joules per coulomb of, uh, of, you know, 18 joules of work per coulomb is being done to each coulomb of charge. Uh, how is that then split up? Well, this one here, 9 volts, and this one here, oh look, 9 volts as well. So what we have in this case is this is uh, this law, very similar to the law of the conservation of energy. Okay. Um, the, by measuring the potential difference of the EMF, you're getting a sense of how many joules are used per coulomb. Well, as these coulombs of charge travel around, they have to use that, they have to give that back. So what we end up with is, um, you know, this the law of conservation energy. Look, across most of my components, I have the same voltage because I have to use the energy, you know, the energy gets used from the component in an ideal circuit. 
Now you might sometimes measure something differently, and in the lab you may occasionally measure things differently, and that's because wires do have do it does take energy to travel, like you know, to as things travel through wires, they do use um, they do use energy, they do work on wires that travel through them. Wires get hot. If you ever held any sort of cable that have been running for a while, you'll notice this. In an ideal world, they don't, and in most situations, they don't use anything much compared to what the um, you know the actual component from the circuit. But we can give it some. We say, oh look, there's some. You know, we can actually say, oh look, if we give the wires some actual resistance, which we can do with this tab, we can see, oh look, they're using 0.9, and the longer the wires wire is, the, the more it's using, which is uh, you know important. Um, so you know we will have certain levels of that. Which is true, but in an ideal world, in the exams, we ignore the we ignore wires as having any resistance, so we don't do any work going through them. So we're just worried about these. It is, you know, this law is still going to apply, but we don't really worry about you know, in most circumstances. Here. So, what do we have? Well, on a closed loop, what do we have? Well, we have the EMF, which is eighteen, and we've got the two potential differences, and look, oh, they add up to eighteen as well. So this tells us that how these move. And if we change the resistance of one of them, and our resistance is very big, what we'll find is that the resistance will still add up to 18, 15.31 on this one, 2.69 on this one, you add 15.31 to 2.69, you still get 18. So on a closed loop, the sum of the potential differences around the components will equal EMF, the total EMF supplied. Um, that is because of the conservation of energy. Now, if you add things in parallel, let's add a loop in parallel. Um, let me see what we get there. Add that. Okay. Um, this has no impact when this is on or not. So if we break it, it has no impact on the potential difference I'm reading around. I'm currently reading around this bulb. If I break the circuit, no impact at all. Still 2.69. I cut it again. And that's because charges that go down through this loop and therefore go through this bottom bulb, they do not have to do any work to go through these. They only do work in the components that they go through. So so the charges that's lower this resistance. Little bit. Okay. So what we can see is that you know this this sort of charge is coulomb charge is going through this way. It's going to go through this bulb and this bulb. It's got 18 joules for its coulomb, so that's what it's going to use. Whereas one that's going this way is only going to see this singular thing. We can also see that we're drawing more current out of it as well. So this is Kirchhoff's second law, and it's the law of the con based on the conservation of energy, which is that any around any closed loop. Sum of the potential differences around the components is equal to the sum of the EMFs in the circuit. And there we go, let's have a little note about that. Let's go over here. So. states that the sum the um, sum of potential differences around uh, components in closed loop. Um, potential of some information in a closed loop uh, will equal the sum of the um, in that loop. Uh, this law arises from the law of the conservation of energy. Okay, so we've got conservation of charge, 
conservation of uh, energy. So, um, so what that means is that if we say here we've got um, We can measure with our. We can measure with the voltmeter. We've got our EMF. We measure with voltmeters. Lots of things. We've got um, V1, V2. And we'll call this V3. So we can actually say that um, in this in this loop here, if you go around here, okay, the EMF is going to equal V1 plus v2 and in this one here we've got the fact that the emf is just going to equal um this potential difference because that is all there is um <clears throat> and it also means even if you do things that are more complicated okay this is why um you know so if we do things that are more complicated so let's say we have a bulb there and then we have a bulb here and then we have a bulb here So even in this case, we've got our EMF. Well, what we have here is there's our first one, and there's another one, and there's another one. This, even in this, when you go series and parallel, these two must get the same EMF because there's going to be the same potential difference because there's going to be a set potential difference across this bulb. Which means that, well, these two must, by definition, have the same potential difference across them because otherwise one of them, you know, otherwise it can't work. If you're going to have a loop going that way, then that way, then that way, um, charges that go through this bulb, you can't have the case where some of them would say, oh, well, I'm only going to use a certain amount because then I'm going to go up the top route and I'm going to use a certain amount because I'm going to go down the bottom route because that isn't how that they work. It comes in this kind of fractional thing, which we'll see quite think. So we have um, V1, V2, and then V3. So our EMF is equal to uh, V1 plus V2. Our EMF is also equal to V1 plus V3. Therefore, um, V2 is equal to V3, which tells us that components, um, components in parallel uh, must have the same potential difference. And that is sort of how they use. So um, Kirchhoff's laws, um, they're quite straight. I mean, they are sort of common sense. You've seen them before, like, you know, they, you know, um, you know, you know, Kirchhoff's first law explains everything from why it is that current is the same, um, you know, at all points in this series loop. It also explains, you know, how the current sort of deviates. And we'll look over time at how different, you know, different paths, why they get different amounts of current or with um, with different components in parallel and series, why they get different amounts of um, potential difference and how that's split up to do with the resistance components. But we haven't met that formula yet. So, we're just going to, you can see, you can solve a lot of problems algebraically by considering are they in parallel, are they in series, am I measuring the potential differences, am I measuring the current? And so that's what we're going to do. Excellent. So we're going to have, we're going to have a bit of practice on a few examples of using.